Good morning. Welcome back to Morning Manor. This is Pastor Paul. We're so glad that you have joined us on this day. This is the Lord's Day and we rejoice in it. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Eternal God, we bless you again for a new day filled with new mercies. As we go into your word today, God, open our hearts and minds to receive that which you have prepared for us. In Jesus' name, we ask it all. Amen. Open your Bibles again to the book of 1 Samuel, and we're going to talk about keys to defeating your giant. Keys to defeating your giant. And today is part number two, and we want to look at 1 Samuel chapter 17. And last week, we ended at verse 11 where the army of Israel was being challenged by the Philistine warrior giant by the name of Goliath. And for 40 days, he challenged Israel morning and evening, send me a man, send me a warrior who will fight against me. And the army of Israel, along with King Saul, they were afraid, they were terrified. And so we ended there last week with this story. And I did say, uh, you can and you will be able to defeat your giant or your giants if you look up to the Lord and let the Lord fight for you. And the Lord said, I will make your enemy your footstool. Let's pick up in our reading. Open your Bibles again to 1 Samuel, again, chapter 17. I want to start reading at verse 12, and I'm going to skip down as we go through uh, these scriptures. Now David was the son of that Ephratite of Bethlehem, Judah, whose name was Jesse, and who had eight sons. And the man was old, advanced in years, in the days of Saul. The three oldest sons of Jesse had gone to follow Saul to the battle. The names of these three sons who went to battle were Eliab, the firstborn, the next to him, Abinadab, and the third, Shammah. David was the youngest, and the third oldest followed Saul, and the three oldest followed Saul. But look down to verse number... Um, I want you to go back and look at verse number 17. Then Jesse said to his son David, Take now for your brothers an ephod of this dried grain and these ten loaves, and run to your brothers at the camp, and carry these ten cheeses to the captain of their thousand, and see how your brothers fare. See how your brothers, excuse me, are doing. <clears throat> and bring back news of them. Now, Let's read, skip down to verse 20. So David rose early in the morning, left the sheep with the keeper, and took the things and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the camp as the army was going out to fight and shouting for the battle. They had a battle cry, and David goes and shows up just at that particular time. For Israel and the Philistines had drawn up in battle array, army against army. And David left his supplies in the hand of the supply keeper, ran to the army, and came and greeted his brothers. Then as he talked with them, there was the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, coming up from the armies of the Philistines. And he spoke according to the same words, so David heard them. Let's stop there. I'm going to stop uh, there at verse uh, 23. David shows up. On the front line, David shows up as Israel prepares and make their army formation. They, uh, they root and they rally and they have their battle call and their battle cry. And now Israel stands on the mountain again as they do every day. And all of a sudden, Goliath shows up and Goliath again challenges the armies of Israel. Goliath again, defies the army of the living God. Goliath tells Israel and Saul, there is no way they can defeat he and the Philistine army. 
let's pick up a reading again now, because I want I want you to see something that's very important. Um, God strategically sends David to the battleground uh, just when David needed to be there. God knew that Goliath would show up. God knew that David would hear the challenge of this giant. And God also knew that David did not walk in fear. Although he was a boy, a teenager, David was not a fearful person. And we're going to see later on why David has such a strong tenacity when it came to facing opposition. And as, as, as believers, I believe as Christians, we need a strong tenacity. We need to be people who are not afraid of the enemies of the living God. And so David is at this battleground. David hears the threat of Goliath, and David is concerned. Look at verse 24 of 1 Samuel 17. And all the men of Israel went when they saw the giant, when they saw Goliath, they fled from him and were dreadfully afraid. One translation said they were terrified at Goliath. So the men of Israel said, have you seen this man who has come up? Surely he has come up to defy Israel. And it shall be that the man who kills him, the king will enrich with great riches, will give him his daughter and give his father's house exemption from taxes of Israel. So there was uh, some incentive, not only to fight against Goliath, but there was some incentive uh, to defeat Goliath, because if you defeated Goliath, uh, Saul would give you riches, Saul would give you his daughter for marriage, Saul would give this man's father a tax exemption uh, because of his great skills defeating the Philistine giant Goliath. Listen, we, we have an incentive today not to stand still, but to defeat the enemy of God because the Lord is our shepherd. We have an incentive uh, that God will fight for us. The Bible says, let God arise and the enemy be scattered. When God shows up and rises up against our enemies, our enemies not only will be defeated, but those who remain and are witnesses to the power of God, they will scatter out of the fear of God's wrath. Let's look a little further. Verse uh, 26. Then David spoke to the men who stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the, for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach of Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God, David said, I can't believe you guys are letting this guy do this every day, twice a day. And, and he's letting this uncircumcised, this heathen, this Gentile, this person who does not belong to our God. You're letting him scare you to the point where you're running away for your life. Well, that's interesting uh, because when David's brother hears this, David's oldest brother, he begins to chastise David. Why are you here? You're just here to be messy. You're just here in our business. What do you want? Did you come here for a purpose? Uh, that's, in, uh, that's in verse 31. I'm paraphrasing. But let me tell you something. Uh, you have to know something. The Lord put David there because the Lord knew David's heart. God knows your heart. God knows what you are capable of accomplishing through his power. And when you know that God knows your heart and God understands your desire to do his will, God will certainly be with you. So in verse 32, uh, the word gets back to Saul, what David said, and Saul sent for David, and then Saul decided that he was going to use David uh, uh, just in case David uh, was able to do something. But I want to I want to I want to give you um, look at verse 32. Let's read that. Let me read 31. Now, when the words which David spoke were heard, they reported them to Saul and he sent for him. Then Saul said to David, let no man. Then David said to Saul, rather. 
Let no man's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. Verse 33. And Saul said to David, You are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. Let me, let me say this. Um, David really, in verse 32, told the king, Listen, Saul, I, I've got this. I could handle this. Let me go out and fight against this Philistine champion. Let me go out and do what God wants me to do and what God needs to get done. I love this about David, but I think in every situation that, that, that really requires strong leadership, God will always raise someone up. And God was raising David up to face this challenge of defeating this giant by the name of Goliath. What, what challenges are you willing to face even if it causes you everything? I mean literally everything, including your life. David didn't have that kind of fear. David said, you know what, Goliath, all of your soldiers are afraid. And he couldn't tell the king he was afraid because, you know, Saul couldn't handle criticism. But David said, I can, let me do it. Let me go out and fight this giant. I've got this. I've got the Lord on my side. I know without a shadow of a doubt that I can have victory. Hey, you can have victory today. You can have victory in Jesus if you put the Lord first. I love what John said. John the baptizer said when Jesus was coming uh, on the scene, John said, I must decrease that he will increase. And when we step back and let God be God, certainly we will have victory in his name. Listen, that's our time for today, but we're going to pick back up next week as we conclude with our study, Keys to Defeating Your Giants. God bless you, and I'll see you next week for our morning manna.